everyone, welcome. We're gonna get started right away. We've got a big agenda tonight. Welcome to the August 25, 2020 meeting of the Weathersfield Historic District Commission. For those of you who have not been here before, tonight's session is comp comprised of two parts, the public hearing and the public meeting. In the public hearing, we ask the, each applicant in turn to come forward and explain their application in detail. This will give us an opportunity to clarify what you're proposing to do and for you to ask any questions. Also, the commissioners may voice an opinion or suggestion based on their own feelings and opinions. However, a vote is not taken until the public meeting followed following the public hearing. In the public meeting, which is not open to public comment, we will deliberate your application and decide how to act on it. We may approve it, approve it with stipulations, table it for further consideration, or in rare cases, we may deny it. You are welcome to stay for the public meeting, but not, need not do so. The results of tonight's meeting will be available from the Weathersfield Building Office tomorrow at 860-721-2839, anytime after 9 a.m. Please be advised that Historic District Commission approval does not preclude the need for any other permits, such as zoning, inlands of wetlands, or building. Please contact the building department to review any other permits that may be required before you begin your construction. With this, I'll ask our clerk, Commissioner Lyons, to read the legal notice. Thank you, Chair Chairman. Uh, legal notice, Town of Wethersfield Historic District Commission. Wethersfield Historic District Commission will hold a virtual public hearing on Tuesday, October 13th, 2020 at 7.30 p.m. on the following applications seeking a certificates of appropriateness. Application 5061-20, Stephen and Barbara Davis seeking to replace windows in home with Harvey Majesty double hung windows at 116 Center Street. Application 5062-20, Matthew Romano seeking to install roof mounted PV solar panel system 17 panels on rear roof of home at 54 Middletown Avenue. Application 5063-20, Matthew Romano, seeking to install roof mounted PV solar panel system with 10 panels on rear of home at 9 Avalon Place. Application 5064-20, Alan Piscatello, seeking to install 12 by 16 classic cape style shed with gray vinyl siding, white trim, two windows with shutters, solid single door, and a garage door with top windows at 6 River Road. Application 5066-20, Joseph Carey, seeking to install Wincore 5400 series vinyl windows with grills between the glass in home at 57 Middletown Ave. Application 5068-20, Zocco's Home Improvements LLC, seeking to construct a 14 by 18 first floor addition on rear of home with siding to match existing and four new double hung windows at 120 Main Street. Application 5069-20, Jason Race, seeking to construct a 20 by 20 lean-to shed on rear garage with wood siding to match existing at 385 Hartford Avenue. Application 5071-20, PK Windows LLC, seeking to replace 21 windows in home with Harvey Majesty double hung windows at 71 Center Street. Application 5072-20, Mark Trahan, seeking to replace windows at home with Marvin Elevate windows, also install a vinyl arbor on right side of home at 21 Robinswood Drive. If you wish to review the applications on file, may request a copy by contacting HDC comments at weathersfieldct.gov or by calling 860-721-2836. Live participation is available by audio format any residents interested in speaking on an application or wishing to, wishing to listen to the meeting should email HDC comments at weathersfieldct.gov or call 860-721-2836 by 6 p.m. on the night of the meeting to be sent a phone number for audio access. Please include your name, phone number, and address in the email. Town of Weathersfield Historic District Commission, Kim Wolf, duly authorized. Thank you, Chris. Kim, very quickly, we have two people who are signed into our meeting that aren't identified on the CAM. Um, I'm gonna ask you to open one at a time. The first one is 860-436-4699, so that we know who that person is, if they which application they're on, we know when to open them up again later. Just for the general public, some of the, some of the town meetings have been having difficulties 
with people um, bombing into their meetings with inappropriate behavior. So we just wanna make sure we have applicants or people wishing to comment on the actual applications instead of someone uh, with other intentions. So that first number, um, 436, yes. can you tell me what application you're on? Uh, that's the very first one. That's the one that was tabled by LISCA 5052-20. That's great. Thank you very much. And then we'll go to the, Kim, you can mute him until we're ready to go. The second telephone is that 860-480-5864. They're unmuted. Oh, is Doug Ovian coming in? No, so I don't know who that other one is. They have us on mute. Can I ask the first? 5864 is unmuted. Okay, so they have us muted. They do. Okay, well you can put them back on mute and um, we'll see how it goes. Okay. Okay, great, and let's get started then. Hi Doug, welcome. I don't know if he can hear us. Hey. Hey. Turning to that first application, if you want to unmute uh, Mr. Liska, 5052 Liska's at 21 Chesterfield Road. Are they back on? They're unmuted. Okay, he's no. back on. Mr. Liska? Hello. Hi there. Welcome back. So when we were last um, here, we were just looking for some additional information. You were going to um, find out about your picture window and then you were gonna look a little more closely at those two lamp posts. It looks like yes. Kim, provided, Kim provided us with some information regarding the windows on the rest of the house. Um, and do you have anything new to give us with regard to the lamp posts? Um, yes, after working with Kim, um, we've decided to revise our application um, to uh, switch it from vinyl posts to either composite or wood. Um, I sent her two uh, designs that we have. They'll either be constructed um, or purchased, um, and they'll probably be, you know, uh, next spring possibly. Okay, so when you say composite, um, like a hardy plank board, something that's closer to wood? Well, probably like an ASEC or something like that. Um, basically, if I build it, it will be wood, uh, which is the, what I'm planning to do. But if it turns out that we buy them, we'll, we'll look at that point uh, to see exactly what the composite is. But that was uh, my understanding that they were generally like an ASEC or something. Okay. Jen, if I could jump in, the cut sheets are saying uh, specific we'll... ASEC. Um, I'm sorry. The, the cut sheets are saying ASEC, uh, cellular vinyl. That was, the, that was the original lamppost that he um, submitted before. I don't think. No, these he... are the Walpole ones. They're in there. Oh, okay. Great. Yeah, that's what I used as a design to submit. Sorry to jump in, just for the record. No, oh, that's great. Thank you. Mr. Liska, is there a reason you're using two different styles? Two different, two different posts? Yeah. Um, we're on a corner lot, so one is uh, on the main our street, Chesterfield Road, and the other one is by the driveway on the side street. Right. So the one with the, the sign would be out front on Chesterfield. With the address on, got it. Right. So in the one on the side is to match the post on porch. Heard that. The one on the side is matching the, there's a post on our porch. Got it. Thank you. Okay. Is there any additional information you have for us tonight for your application? Uh, no. Does anyone have any additional questions? Uh, Mr. Liska, I think I forgot to ask you to identify you your, and your wife for the record, your name and address for the record. 
Sure. It's William Wiska and Nicole Wiska, 21 Chesterfield Road in Wethersfield. Thank you very much. Is there anyone from the public wishing to speak in favor or against? Hearing none, we'll move on to application number 5058, Julie Costello, 341 Main Street. I'm looking for her, sorry. That's okay. She's the one by the cozy fireplace. <laughs> oh. I know she's here somewhere, but there's so many of them. Hold on. <laughs> and they keep moving. Sorry, I know she's here. There she is. Sorry, Julie. All right, I think we're good now. Thank you. <laughs> I um, so yes, I am in front of my cozy fireplace. It's that time of year now. Mm -hmm. Can you give your name and address for the record, please? Sure, for the record, it's Julie Costello. 341 Main Street. That's correct. <laughs> Thank you. So what have you learned since last being here with us? Oh, lots. <laughs> I, uh, as you know, a member of your committee came out and toured my house and gave me a lot of information. So I am very open-minded and willing to listen to suggestions. Um, my preference is still to stick with the Harvey windows where no one can see them in the kitchen part of the house but I can certainly understand why you might want me to repair the old windows or perhaps go with a historic replication. And I have contacted uh, contractors who can do both. I can do uh, restoration of the windows that need it and I can do historic replication of the windows uh, using what would appear to be a historic glass. Um, that would only be a single pane window, uh, which is why I would still like to use the Harvey in the, the kitchen area. Uh, because that would be a double pain, um, but I can certainly understand why the commission was talking to me about trying to restore or go with a more original looking window. Do you think that you need a little more time to work out with the contractors exactly what you're planning on doing? Because we don't have to make this. What we're really <laughs> looking for from you is exactly what you want to do with which windows so, um, because right, so we can't really decide it for you. All right, so I'll tell you exactly what I'd like to do. I would like to, for the front windows facing the road, there are the two six over sixes on the first floor. I would like to replace those with a, a historic replication window with a 12 over 12 divided by pattern. And uh, that would have the wavy glass in it. That would have the original, um, everything would be as the original windows were done. It won't have the cladding uh, like the Harvey windows do. Um, and I believe it's the mortise and tenon joinery that is the, the telltale sign of a historic window. It would have those. Uh, if the commission wants me to, I can also do that with the four windows on the south side of the house as well. Right now they're the six over six. I really, really want to replace those with the 12 over 12. My initial proposal had been to do that with the Harvey Majesty, but you know, having researched this more, I can understand with all the foot traffic going by, why maybe going with um, a replication window uh, that looks historic might be more accurate. And I'm okay with that. Um, I'm also okay with, um, there's a 12 over 12 window on the north side of the house. I'm perfectly okay with restoring that rather than pulling it out and replacing it. Um, but as far as the bathroom windows um, on the north side of the house, the two 12 over 12s on the north side of the house, and then there's um, two other windows at the very back of the house, I would really like to do those with the Harvey Majesty. So that's my request. Uh, I know last time we spoke, there had been a request for me to try to go facade by facade. And having spoken with uh, a contractor who's capable of restoring the windows, I can do that as well. Uh, that work wouldn't be able to begin until the first of the year, though. So I've, I've done a lot of work and um, I, I leave it in your capable hands because you're the experts and that's why I bought a house on Main Street because it's so pretty here. So you tell me what you want and I will abide accordingly, but those were my wishes. Okay. And if you were to, if you're restoring the other windows, they would be painted black to match. Correct. Oh, okay. Yes. Well, we really appreciate all your efforts and your willingness to discuss with Vasek. Um, Vasek, do you need anything further? I'm good. Okay. Thanks so much, Julie. I appreciate it very much.
All right, thank um, you. Does anyone else have any questions for the applicant? Hearing none, okay. anyone from the public wishing to speak in favor or against? Hearing none, we'll move on to the next application, 5061. Jen? Oops, I'm on the wrong list. Jen, can I just stop you for a second? Yep. I'm going to unmute everyone because if there's public comment, oh, right. we're not going to be able to do it that way. All, All right. right, hold on. Uh, you're going to have to ask again. Hold on. Okay. This is going to have to go back to IT tomorrow <laughs> for a conversation. Right. Okay. Okay. I apologize, everyone. One more time on application 5052 and 5058. Does anyone from the public wish to speak in favor or against these applications? Hearing none, I'm going to move on to 5061, Stephen and Barbara Davis at 116 Center Street. Good evening, I'm Steve Davis and I live at 116 Center Street. Uh, and as you can see, uh, we are uh, seeking to replace our original windows in our home uh, with Harvey Majesty windows. Now, what is your plan for the windows above the front door that have the half moon on top and then the um, east facing window in the attic that's also a half moon <clears throat> and on the west side, the two quarter circles in the attic as well. Oh, he's turned off. Hold on, Mr. Davis. Where is he? He's muted. I think you muted. Muted. Everybody should be unmuted. No, no everybody is muted. He's listed as cat right now and he is muted. I ha he's unmuted on my thing, so he's oh, got to unmute himself. Mr. Davis, if you put your um, cursor down to the bottom left side of your screen, a little mute microphone should show up. You need to unmute yourself. We can't hear you all of a sudden. No, you're still on mute. I'm hitting on mute. All right, he's unmuted now. Oh, there we go. Okay. Okay. Go Sorry about that. That's okay. I did that. Okay. Um, to, to answer your, your, your question, uh, the windows above the front door uh, are, are remain the same. I do need to repair the half uh, window in the attic and the other windows on the uh, uh, west side will stay the same in the attic. Okay, so you're not going to replace even the ones over the door. You're just going to repair them and keep them the same? Yes. Okay. And so essentially all the specialty windows will remain the same and then the standard double hungs will be replaced. Yes. Okay. And they'll all be white. Yes. And grills are going to be simulated divided light. Uh, the grills will re re remain the same, the same as they are right now. So yes. There's so, six, over, six over one or six over zero. Yeah. So the question is down Hi. on... Uh, one Hi, can I, can I interject? I'm sorry, guys. Sure. Oh, sure. Th this is Doug Lacella, DBL Contracting, 37 Belmont Street. Um, so, Steve... We, we may have talked about this, but I understand you don't remember. The, the question they're asking is the, the light, the, the grid pattern, is the simulated divided light, and it will be, which means grids applied to the exterior, um, a, a grid between the panes, and also a grid on the interior, thus creating simulated divided light. Oh, okay. That, I do recall that now, Doug. Sorry. <laughs> That's okay. Thank you. Thanks, Doug. Hey, Kim. I think you're going to have to take the people off until public comment because it's too much flashing between screens unless they've got their contractor there too, which it doesn't 
look like tonight? Can you hear me? I can. Okay. I'm sorry to make extra. I'm sorry to make extra work for you. We're just getting a lot of interference in the background. Yeah. So, who, you want me to mute everybody again? Yeah, I think so. All right. Hold on. Everybody's I, muted. I apologize. Yeah. It's just that we're. And if um, somebody identifies that their contractor is waiting, we can open it up again. Right. Do, do any of the commissioners have any other questions for Mr. Davis? Um, I think, so I, actually my question is probably not to Mr. Davis, but to Mr. Lasella. Um, and the boxes when they go into the existing frames are going to be trimmed out in such a way that there's how many shadow lines will be there? Uh, not sure what you're talking about, about shadow lines, but basically it's like any insert window it goes within the existing frame of the, the existing window. Of course. And then you put something over from the exterior, you put something over the new frame and the, what remains of the old frame to sort of blend it into the sides, correct? No. That's the Marvin Elevate that you're referring to, which has a vinyl snap-in grid, which snaps into the new insert and, and overlays the existing window stop. Okay. The Harvey Majesty, which I, I'm, I'm certain everybody on the uh, commission is um, very familiar with, does not have that. Okay, so there is a joint line between the new window and the old stops, correct? Yes, just like every Harvey Majesty that's put in, been put in, yes. Versus the vinyl snap-in grid on the Marvin Elevate. Mm -hmm. Yep, I got that, thank you. I have a question on the obligatory screen choice. I don't know if that was identified. Um, Doug, do you know what uh, the Davises have chosen on that for the record so we can enter it? Yeah, it's just the uh, standard uh, fiberglass mesh. Uh, I realize that it, in some cases it's been, um, the, the window's been approved with stipulations for the aluminum screen, which is an option. I don't want to speak for the Davises, but I, I, I think I can speak for them and say that wouldn't be an issue if that were uh, a stipulation. Is that a full or a half, uh, sorry? Half, half screen. Thank you. Yep. Anyone else? Mr. Davis or uh, Mr. Lasella, anything else for us? Uh, I really have nothing really to add other than, you know, we're just trying to uh, make our home much more energy efficient and, uh, may have windows that we can open very easily. <laughs> that sounds great. Thanks very much for coming in. Thank you. Uh, do we have any members of the public wishing to speak in favor or opposed to this application? Sorry, Kim. I, everyone is unmuted, so if you want to speak, Kim. Anyone that wants to speak would have to unmute themselves on their end as well. Hearing none, we'll move on to the next application. 5062 Matthew Romano at 54 Middletown Avenue. Good evening. Hi there. Hi. I, I actually live on uh, 271 Christian Lane in Burnley, Connecticut. I'll speak in behalf um, I'm the I'm the solar representative on that property. And what's your name, please? Matthew Romano, R O M A. Okay, tell us about the project. Well, uh, she's gonna have 17 panels. They're all gonna go on back of her roof. Uh, we're gonna hide the conduit piping through her attic, and we do have inverters that we usually put next to the meter. But if you guys request them uh, in the basement, we could do that as well. I don't know what you guys, this is my first time at the hearing. Uh, Kim Wolf was very, very helpful in this process. I don't know if she's on the call, but I want to say thank you to her. 
Here. Yeah, thank you, Kim, so much. <laughs> She's probably sick of hearing my voice. Uh, so what we try to do is just make it look nice because, of course, it's the historic district, even though if it wasn't, what that's what we do, Trinity. We just want you guys to see the panels on the roof without any kind of piping or anything else on the roof. Are the panels um, just flat black or do they have the squares or the cells that are outlined that are sometimes visible? They're, they're, they're flat black. No, no squares, no polka dots on them like some companies have. They're, they are definitely flat black, which look, we think we look the nicest. That's the only one we offer to our customers. And in the package that you submitted, there is a drawing, which I assume is meant to be, it's pretty much the entire back portion of the house. Is that correct? Correct. Yep. 17 panels. Okay. Probably laid out all nice for, you know, not only you guys, but the customer as well. Did everyone have a chance to drive by this property? Those, um, <clears throat> it's obviously completely invisible from Middletown Avenue, but you do get a pretty good view of it from Summerfield. Um, and then on, although it is glancing, excuse me, <clears throat> glancing and through the houses. And then on footpath, um, there is no view presently, but it's blocked by a, a hedge. So feasibly in that spot, actually, you could end up with a pretty clear view, but for that arborvitae hedge. Do you happen to know, Mr. Romano, does that, is that hedge maintained? Is it owned by the homeowner at 54 Middletown Avenue, or is that the neighbors? Uh, I don't know that offhand. I can get that information to you. Okay. Jennifer, I think that belongs to the neighbor. Matt, you, you mentioned that the inverter and the mechanicals, the boxes could be put in the basement. Is that a cost factor or just an appearance or what does it do to the project? Well, we usually keep it outside the house next to the meter. Just that, that's what typical is, but uh, with one off situation, which this is, we could put it inside the basement. If that's going to stop this homeowner for going solar on this committee, we will present it to my team and we, we could put it in the basement. So what's guys, the preference or code? You know what has to be. I mean, the shutoff has to be outside, right? Yeah, the shutoff has to be inside, but the inverter can go inside. So the shutoff can still. If, if the sh we usually put everything right next to the meter, nice and clean, so it looks because the meter's there already. It's not a big nuisance. But you guys, if you guys are requesting either the basement or put it in the back of the house, we just have to run more piping. I don't know what. Again, this is my first hearing. I don't know what you guys, as a committee, are looking for next to the uh, meter or not. Now you mentioned the conduit, the piping that you're going to be able to go through the attic and stuff. Does if it's on the outside, does that a conduit? Where does that join? Does that come from the basement down, or, or how is that going to join the inverter? So that's why we usually keep it right next to the meter. So we just have that one piece of conduit down from the roof all the way down to the meter. I mean, on which which of your application, you show the the panels and what have you. Do you show where that's going to be monitored or where that's going to meet up with the meter? I, I see it here in the one looks like page. Well, on, on our around for me, sorry. just in case they have any questions question mark i think someone's got to get muted i don't know who's talking <laughs> oh, <man. laughs> I'm, sorry, I, I, I'm sorry someone uh said something i kind of missed your question i'm sorry no, no, that, that, yeah, that wasn't, that was uh, some comments from somebody else on, I, I was just asking where on the house, it looks like it's just in front on the driveway side when I drive by, that's where the meter was. So, Correct. so that kind of what's going to come down from where, where you're going to hide it through the attic, but how are you going to get it over there? To we'll put it on the side there? of the house and try to put it underneath the siding and go underneath that way to the meter. And then a straight shot down. Yep. Yep. But that could be put inside instead? Yes, if that's your request. We just keep it next to the meter just because the meter's there already and we try to make it look as clean as possible, easiest way. Anyone else have any questions for this applicant on this application? 
Thanks for the picture. Hearing none. Um, yeah, just for the record, Kim, thank you for putting up the picture of the um, plot plan. That was really helpful because I couldn't tell. There did seem to be two rows of hedges of arborvitaes, but neither of those two rows are owned by the uh, applicant at 54 Middletown Avenue. So I think that's something to keep in mind. Um, although they probably would maintain them because they wouldn't want to see them either. So maybe we would be fine. Um, in any event, do we have any members of the public wishing to speak in favor or against this application? Everyone is unmuted. Hearing none, we'll move on to application 5063, Matthew Romano again. This time Thanks. at 9 Avalon Place. Hey guys, it's me again. <laughs> Solar panels. <laughs> you guys are getting sick of the solar panel routine yet? Can you just uh, give your um, business address again for the record? My my physical address is 271 Christian Lane. Great. Thank or, you. Yeah. Uh, okay. same, same, yeah. Same concept here. 10 panels. Gonna, gonna hide all the conduit through the Attic access again and go right down to the meter. Again, if you guys are requesting the inverter get placed either the back of the house or in the basement, we can oblige that. We just make it, you know, it's, it's, we think it's cleaner and make it easier. But if you guys are requesting that, which is the historic district, we, we would we were obliged by that. And again, for the record, these are the same panels. They have no dots or grid pattern or anything like that. Correct, same panels. And the panel placement is as submitted in the application that you gave us. Is that correct? Yes, ma'am. Correct. Okay. Mr. Romano, what is the size of the inverters? Because oh, a pretty I, picture of it, but no size is associated with it. Yeah, I would say maybe two by four. Two foot by four foot. So say that again. Two foot. Well, not that big. Two by four feet. I would say, uh, I, I don't have the exact measurements. I apologize. Uh, I don't know if the pictures are saying it on what the hair cubic rule. I can get that to you guys. I don't know the exact measurements of the inverter. Okay. I was never asked that question. Well, so there's all this discussion about where to put the thing. And, you know, if it's, if you're going to tell me it's a, four inch by six inch thing, then I'll say, you know, why not go by the meter? If it's a 10 foot by six foot thing, then yeah, stick it in the basement. So that that's where my question's coming from. Okay. Well, I think that it's a cleaner, it's a tidier look for us if the conduit is run inside and the box as much as possible of the mechanicals are interior so that we can't see them. Um, on this house, especially putting it on the back of the house, if it's a, a big box and that in the um, conduit is not really helpful because unfortunately um, you have a clear shot of this house from Wilcox from the back side. So while you'll see nothing from Avalon, um, it is visible from Wilcox. There's a, the placement of the houses on the street behind them um, are not, they're not tightly placed as they are on Avalon. And there's actually an empty lot that you can see the entire back of the house. And then you can also see it through between the two houses after that. So this situation is a little bit different um, than the Middletown Avenue one where we really have glancing views of this house from behind. Um, this one, we really have a pretty, a pretty open look at it. So that's something that we have to discuss amongst ourselves during the public meeting. Um, and hopefully every, if people didn't have a chance to drive by and, and make note of that, um, you know, it might be worth having a look at it. Um, does anyone else have any questions for this applicant? None here. None, okay, hearing none. Um, any members of the public wishing to speak in favor or against? Hearing none, we will oh, move on. Can I just unmute everyone? Oh, okay. 
Anyone wishing to speak in favor or against? Thank you, Kim, I'm sorry. Hearing none, we'll move on to application 5064, Alan Piscatello at Six River Road. Uh, yes, I'm here. Hi, Mr. Piscatello, tell us about your project. I intend to uh, place a 12 by 16 uh, shed in the back corner of my yard, the southwest corner. Okay. And I drove by earlier today. It's pretty hard to see because of the sight line between the houses. It's tucked behind the house. Is that right? That's correct. It's, uh, it's not very visible from the road from where I'm going to place the shed. <clears throat> I gave you guys quite a bit of details on what the shed would be, the size, the roof, the siding, the doors, all that stuff. You did, and I appreciate that. Um, it's a, co a very complete application. Does anyone have any questions for this applicant with what has been submitted already? I have one question, and I assume that the ridge line runs from the front to the back of the property of, of the building, so they get the garage door uh, part is facing the street? Correct. The garage door will be facing uh, north towards the street. Okay, thank you. Anyone else? Hearing none, um, we'll ask the public if there's any members of the public wishing to speak in favor or against. Or unmuted. Hearing none, we'll move on to the next. Thank you, Mr. Piscatello. We'll move on to You're the welcome. next. Thank you. Thanks. Next application 5065 at 24 Maple Street, the application for an extension of time. Good evening, for the record, my name is Megan Hope. I'm an attorney with Alter and Pearson at uh, 701 Hebron Avenue, Glastonbury. Uh, my client, Joe Sulo, is also um, on the call tonight in case anyone has any questions. Uh, we submitted a request for an extension uh, to begin construction. We did receive approval for the restaurant at the corner um, of Maple Street back in October of last year. Um, in January, of uh, this year, we received approval from the Zoning Commission, and uh, due to the COVID crisis and pandemic, we are not starting construction in this construction season, so we've requested an extension um, from the PNZ to start construction um, in the next construction season. So we submitted a request um, with the Zoning Commission that we do not need to have uh, started construction until January 7th, 2022. And so we're looking to uh, request an extension from the Historic District Commission so that your um, timeline for construction coincides with the zoning extension that we requested. Okay. It's, a little, it's a little bit longer um, than we would normally grant to begin construction. Um, but it is an administrative issue more than anything else, having gone through the lengthy process of getting this project through and approved. Um, certainly, we're mindful of the fact that with um, the pandemic, not only is it difficult to open a new restaurant during these times, it's also difficult to get the supplies to build the new restaurant at this time. Um, I don't have any further questions for you. I don't know if any of the other members of the commission do. None here. None? Okay. Kim, if you can uh, let the public, if we have anyone wishing to speak in favor or against. All set. Yeah, I think I forgot my phone. <laughs> I'm getting old. Anyone wishing to speak in favor or against? Hearing none, thank you very much for coming in. We appreciate it. Uh, we'll move on to application 5066 at 57 Middletown Avenue. Joseph Carey. Kim, do we have, did you, were you in touch with anyone? Were they planning on coming in tonight? I have made multiple phone calls and sent multiple emails and he has not responded to any of my requests to reply. Okay, we're gonna pass it for now and uh, move on to application 5067-360 Main Street. Thank you. 
Good evening, this is Ian Buckles with Earthlight Technologies, 92 West Road, Ellington, Connecticut. Welcome back. Thank you. Uh, yeah, we're looking to amend that previous application. Same thing, 36 panels um, in the same placement. We're just switching them to the uh, 350 watt sun power panels, which are an all black panel, uh, black frame, black back sheet, um, everything else. I don't know if you want me to run through everything again, but I do have some cut sheets uh, to show if you want me to share my screen and some uh, design examples of previous installs. Um, we'll take a, a picture of the new product, but um, what you were approved for um, excluded the south side, which was visible from the street and the balance of the panels were approved. So mm -hmm. the amendment's a little funny because it reads like you're asking for those panels which were not approved to be approved in this application, plus change essentially a material change. Is that correct? Correct. So the previous application we had um, were the were the um, three twenty seven watt panels, which have a white back sheet. Um, and in in that conversation, uh, the question was asked, "Do you have an all black panel?" Um, so that uh, application was approved with stipulations that remove those seven panels. Uh, we're looking to keep all 36 panels and switch everything over to an all black panel so that those seven panels that are visible partially from the street um, um, would be would be those black panels. So Just to clarify, me, they would all be the black panels. Okay, so for me, um, it, generally when you're coming in on an application that's already been acted on, you can't represent something that's already been acted on either in favor or against unless you're presenting something that's substantially different. <laughs> For me in this case, sorry. Um, that was loud. For me in this case, um, the change in the um, actual panel, which I think you're going to share with us in a second, does not represent a substantial change. Um, but I'd like to hear from the rest of the commissioners as well. I, just to give you a for instance, um, if you had come in with this, uh, generally uh, Kim would refuse to put it back on the schedule, um, except that you are asking for a change on the balance of the house that was approved. So I'd be interested in hearing what the other members of the commission think about these new panels on, a, on an area that has already been um, declined. And just real quick, um, I'm trying to share my screen, but it looks like it's been disabled. <laughs> yeah. it, it was not disabled by me, it was disabled by IT. It's one of the things that we have lost. Oh. Okay. Well, I think honestly that we're all familiar with what the change in the product is. What the discussion had been, and I think it had been, um, Doug, who I think is listening in but not participating tonight, was that perhaps if it was missing the, that grid block look or the dot look that we see on some of the products, that it might be more palatable um, overall and in particular in those ones that you could see. Um, again, you know, I'd, I'd like to hear what everyone else has to say. For me, um, it's really more about having solar panels uh, that visible on Main Street on a house of this prominence that is difficult for me to get over whether it be what I think probably is a better looking product and I do really appreciate that you've come back with it um, but I'm, I'm curious to see what the rest of the commissioners think as well. Yeah uh, this is Doug and I will say that uh, I understand the distinction you're trying to draw here but I would venture to say that the uh, difference is uh, sufficient to at least allow us to address it. Okay, I'll, I'll just weigh in and again, I, I think I would share um, Commissioner Wolf's opinion where, you know, we're trying to, on, on houses similar to this style in this location, this prominence, I guess, it, to, to kind of limit the exposure that we see street side um, on the on the panel. So for me, it would have it would be a no for that addition those additional uh, seven panels. 
I agree as well. Uh, I appreciate the efforts to minimize that silver in, in that kind of veining appearance. Uh, I think though that my decision, those seven panels, uh, you know, were pretty prominent uh, to, to the district and right on a main street, a, a house of an error that we want to maintain uh, its appearance. Does anyone else have anything to add? I mean, we, we can discuss this during the public meeting too. Yep. Sure. Yep. All right. I apologize that you weren't able to share your screen. Um, and again, we're trying to work out the, the kinks that come along with operating under these restrictions right now. Um, my apologies. So if you have nothing further for us, I will ask if any members of the public wish to speak in favor or against. Everyone's all set, Kim. Um, this is just Ian again. I think we have the homeowner uh, on the call too. I don't know if he wants to uh, oh, sure. say anything. Oh, sure. Yeah, thanks, Ian. Yeah, Tom here. Um, I can certainly appreciate, I think, where folks are coming from in terms of wanting to maintain the, the historic aspect of um, the neighborhood, the community, and of course, this house. I guess for me, I'm a, I, I didn't. In my opinion, I don't think that the view for which these panels would be visible by is bright, big enough, wide enough um, to be seen by enough people to really cause or draw that much of attention. I guess I, I, guess I felt like it was a, such a small portion of the south facing roof line, which really can only be seen in the winter months anyway because of the trees that block it. I just felt that it was so small, I guess I thought that there wouldn't be an issue having it on that particular roof line. And the reason why we really needed it to have it on that roof line was really to obtain the maximum amount of solar energy. Otherwise, it, it would sort of defeats the purpose to not include that portion of the roof because then it would, we're falling well under 100% of our energy use. So, um, again, like I said, I understand where folks are coming from. I guess I felt like it was a small enough portion of the roof in, in, in an area that's not that visible um, when you're coming down Main Street. I thought it would be okay. So that's just my perspective. For the record, can you just give your name and home address too so we have you properly identified? Uh, Tom Ray, 360 Main Street. Thank you very much. Yep. And again, anyone from the public wishing to speak in favor or against? Hearing none, we'll move on to application 5068, 120 Main Street. Uh, can you hear me? Yes. Okay, this is Mia Caulfield. Um, so I have my contractor on here because he can explain everything to you. And I think Kim has, Kim, you have a lot of uh, slides, right? They have, everybody has a copy of it. Okay. And Mrs. Caulfield, you're the homeowner? Yes. Can the, um, your contractor identify himself for the record name and business address? Uh, Paul Zacco. Uh, currently living at uh, 1178. Nope. Oh, no, I'm living at. She wants no, to know where I live. Oh, Zacco's Home Improvements. I'm sorry. <laughs> That's okay. uh, living at 1178 Salzine Highway at the Borden. Great. Thank you. You're welcome. Um, so tell us about your project. Uh, we're seeking to construct a 14 by 18 uh, first floor uh, addition on the rear of the home, matching the existing cement siding, pretty weather street. Um, with double hung windows, uh, everything to match what's on the house. Currently, uh, with all the same timberline shingles that are matching the existing roof line, also charcoal gray. Uh, doing a crawl space, bumped out, only five feet of it. It's exposed from the street side on the side of the house that would match the existing siding. It all matched the same. Um, again. Yeah, and get it all, should have all the paperwork. It's on the house, double on windows.
You guys have the drawings in front of you? Yes. Yep. Yep. I'm sure everyone's looking at them. Um, and the details on the back of this, even though from Main Street, it's a fairly narrow sight line. Um, it is close to the Garden Street intersection and also visible from Garden Street. I was planning to put three or four arborvitaes on the side of my house or even more if that it took that. Well, I, I think uh, what Commissioner Wolf is simply saying is that it is visible and we'd like to make sure that you have a gracious house when you're done, whether you plant arborvitae or not. Uh, so, and I think we're very close to achieving that. Um, it just, yeah, I think you, you have a, I mean, the, the Application looks great. Uh, the elevations, I think, read well and also get across the idea of uh, what you're doing quite well. Uh, I have either to the applicant or to Mr. Zaku, I'm not sure who, is I assume that despite the grids being drawn into the windows, these are going to be one over one windows? Yes. Okay. Um, and I'm curious. The siding that you're using is what? Say that again. Sorry. What is, what is the siding you're using on the new addition? I assume it's not the asbestos siding that's on there now. No, that's on the upper part of the house. Um, what's on the back part of that um, bump out addition is the, uh, it's still a similar straight profile shingle cement siding. Okay. I don't remember what's on the house now, but instead of the curvy wavy looking, that's all the asbestos up there in the front and the sides. The back part already has um, cement siding, which is not asbestos. Okay. I mean, the stuff keeps paint beautifully, so uh, it just, people don't like the, the A word. Yeah. <laughs> Try to keep it consistent, I guess. Yeah. Okay. Uh, a while back, my front porch was hit by a car, and when um, they redid the front, Gove did, they used those particular shingles that Paul's talking about. Great, great. Uh, and yeah, you know, it looks like the drawings indicate that most of the other architectural details are gonna be maintained. Um, the one thing I see, not that it's a make or break thing, but the existing gables have a return that comes in uh, at the end of the gable. The addition just has flying rakes, it looks like. Is that correct? At the lower part of that roof you're talking yeah. about? Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's uh, that's consistent uh, what's existing there now. So we're just trying to tie in um, the little valley part connected to the back of the part of the house. Um, if you see the one of the drawings there, it's the way the architect designed it. Okay, uh, so the, okay. Go ahead. I'm sorry. No, no, I'm good. So again, on the side, what, what was your concern again? Oh, I was just, I was looking at the roof on the main part of the house. And if you follow the gable down, yeah. at the bottom where it meets the gutters, there's a little return there. Yeah. And that return was not shown on the addition. And I'm just asking, you know, basically, it's a cute detail. Is there a reason it wasn't uh, done there? And the answer was, it doesn't exist on the present little bump on the back of the house. So therefore, you're being consistent with that. And that's a fine explanation. No, I meant the first question that, um, I'm sorry, I don't know oh. Jennifer's last name. Oh. No, I was just commenting on the sight lines um, because if we couldn't see it at all from the back, uh, we wouldn't be asking these questions about the gable line and the details on the windows because we wouldn't be able to see them. But we can see them from the other side. Um, whether or not you plant arborvitaes, that's entirely up to you. Since we do have the plans in front of us, you know, we'll like to get as many details as we can. But it looks it looks good. You've given us lots of details. Um, and as you can tell by how few questions there are. Thank you, Paul. <laughs> oh, thank you. <laughs> the 
anyone else have any questions for the applicant? None here. No, nope. hearing none. If you have nothing further for us, um, Mrs. Caulfield or Mr. Uh, Jen, I'm sorry, I was muted. My, oh, my mistake, sure. this is Chris. Yeah. Okay. Sorry about that. Uh, what Basic is talking about is, is elevation A-2, where you can show what he's talking about yeah. on, on peak. I mean, very inter I mean, good point there. The other, the other piece, of course, it addresses, again, just for the record that we know we've asked people about, because it looks like those back stairs coming down, you know, you're going to put in doing closing those. We don't have a real detail on those other than, you know, what the construction is going to be, you know, wood. Oh, it's just going to be all PT wood. Uh, that's what's there now. Um, Are you planning on doing anything on the enclosure, you know, on the, on the sides or they'd be open? I think they're just open, like a free thing open. I could do just a little that. Under, yeah, because right now they're open as exposed. The grass level is just right under it. So the um, railing and balusters will be pressure treated as well? Yeah, yep. all wood. Her potential is to have a manual back yep. there or something, but. Okay. Um, just something to tie into to give her stairs to go down. Thank you. Okay. Okay. Yep. Hearing none, um, any comments from the public in favor or opposed? Hearing none, we'll move on to application 5069 385 Hartford Avenue. Hello. Hi there. Yeah. Yeah. Your name and address for the record? Jason Race, 35 Hartford Ave, Weathersfield. So basically what I'm looking to do is put a 20 by 20 addition to the present freestanding garage um, to the rear. So it's barely seen from um, Hartford Ave itself. Um, basically it'll be three-sided attached to the, um, the garage that's there. Um, I believe you guys all have photos of the yard and my lame attempt at computer graphics. No, we appreciate the efforts. It gives us a good idea of where it's going to be and where the doors are going to be, and that's what we need. I think that we're not going to be able to see too much of it all. Of it at all. The garage is um, fairly far back, and then the sight line on the sides will be pretty small. Yeah, the way the topography of the driveway. Actually, I put a photo from the sidewalk. Um, the driveway kind of arches upward towards the back and it's going to drop off behind it. So it'll be uh, minimal, if anything, that's noticed with a couple of shrubs along the side to block that off anyhow. So the way I'm looking at it, it doesn't look like there's any windows, just a, gar a garage door to the north side and then to the south facing side that would be an access door. Are you asking me? Or you? Yes. Yes, I'm asking. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. I broke up for a second there. Um, right. Garage door on one side, an access door on the other side, and uh, that's pretty much just the plan right there. Um, no windows on the back side. Nothing like that. Not planning on it. No. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Mr. Race, I have one question. The floor level in the lean-to is that going to be at the same height as the floor level inside the garage? No, it actually is going to be lower. It's going to be lower. Correct. Uh, by how much do you know? Uh, probably, well, depending on which side. The the right side, if you're looking at it, probably be about a foot. To the left side, it'll probably be two to three feet. Okay. There, the topography of the backyard dips off to the right, from the center of the yard to the right. So it's not straight across the back of the garage. But I assume that the floor inside the lean-to is going to be level, right? To the To the present garage or to the... Is the floor going to be level? Oh, absolutely. Okay. And the, and the difference in height between them is going to be what? The floor will be level. On one side, it's good. I have to cut into the hill behind the garage. Yeah, yeah. My question is, there's a floor in the garage. There's going to be a floor in the lean-to. Are they going to be at the same level? No. No, the lean-to is going to be lower about two feet probably average across the back. Okay, we're not understanding each other. 
I, if you look at the pictures, it's pretty obvious what it is, the way the back of the garage ends and the hill drops off. Yeah, and yeah. You yeah. cut into the hill to level that off. So the lean-to, the new garage, will be about two feet below what the present garage floor is. There will not be a connection from the present garage to the back garage. So no and access I'm, from the current garage to the new lean-to. I'm good with that. Yeah. Uh, I think where I'm going with this is there's going to be a garage door on the right hand side of the new new addition. Correct. And visually, as granted, it's far away from the street and all that. Visually, I'm just trying to get straight in my head how much lower that garage door is going to be sitting than the perceived existing garage. Well, there's a photo in there that pretty much shows you where it's going to be. Yeah. There's, I don't know if you guys can see the same. Well, I'm looking at uh, the side view. Yep. With a with the garage there, and there's the sh sheep sitting on the uh, hill there, right? And yes. That would be a wolf to keep the goats from attacking my car. <laughs> okay. That's a uh, wasn't quite sure. <laughs> and so the the bottom of that door. Correct is is level and is that at the same height as basically the driveway it's going to be slightly lower the way that the hill drops off behind there okay. it's not meant to drive a vehicle into it's to get my lawnmower to put my snowmobiles and that yep that's fine there. okay it just if there was a lar very large step there it might look awkward uh, only if you stand in my side yard where I took that picture yeah. to see it. Mm -hmm. but, yes. Okay, thank you. Okay. Sounds good. Does anyone else have any questions? Hearing none, welcome to the neighborhood. Your new house is beautiful. Thank you. Um, we'll turn to the public. Does anyone from the public wish to speak in favor or against? Hearing none. Application 5070-157 Broad Street, Mrs. Stavola. There she is. Is she muted? Looks like she's on mute. There we go. Sorry, I thought it was uh, muted on your end. That's okay. Um, well, for the record, uh, Sandra Stavola, 157 Broad Street. Welcome back. What do you have for us today? Minor in nature, just to add an additional gate on the left side of the house. The gate will match existing fence, so it's just to allow uh, access from that side to get a mower in there. I wasn't. Uh, really thinking when I did it, but don't want a commercial mower going over my uh, new patio. So adding a second gate on the left-hand side to have access for a mower to get in there. That sounds great. And I would like to apologize for the temporary fence that's been up for so long that was done so that the shed could get in. And uh, as you stated, it takes a long time to get material. So there was a delay on the shed, but uh, that should all be corrected within the next couple of weeks. No worries. I didn't think it was permanent. Um, does anyone have any questions for Sandy today? Oh, pretty straightforward. Thanks for coming in again. We really appreciate it. Thank you. Does anyone from the public wish to speak in favor or against? Hearing none, application 5071, 71 Center Street. Hello, this is Paul O'Doherty from PK Windows. Can you hear me? Thank yep. you. Are you, are you hearing me? Yeah. Yes, thank you. Go ahead. Yep. 30, 34 Mile Road in West Hartford. And uh, the homeowner is also online. So we're, uh, we're requesting uh, putting in replacement windows, Harvey Majesties, simulated divided light. And we're just replacing the existing double hung windows. None of the other windows are going to be replaced.
everybody hearing me or? Yep. Yeah, we're yeah, here. Okay. We're just pondering. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> uh, five eighths grills. Yeah. Pine. Uh, white finish. Yeah. Yeah. You were asking the other uh, applicant that had this, the same thing where planning on uh, doing a half screen and uh, I was thinking on the uh, uh, view screens, the ones that aren't that visible. I don't know. Uh, we could also do the uh, aluminum if that's uh, requested by you people. What's your preference? I like the view because uh, you, you're not seeing, if you're going with the half, you're not, you're not seeing, uh, besides uh, being great from the inside, you, you're not seeing on the outside, you know, the, the difference that much between, uh, you know, the glass, how it looks. It, it, it looks a lot better, I think. I guess we should wonder what they're, no? Ryan, uh, can you come on or? I see him there. I mean, you probably would have to. He's been messaging him. me. He's having a hard time unmuting himself, but I am. Oh, it's, oh. it's must be on his end because everybody is unmuted on our end here. So on your end. keep trying. Okay. Okay. I'll send him a little message. I think he was thinking that we were going with the standard screen, but uh, I usually put the, the, the uh, uh, view screen, the uh, invisible one on there. So he probably doesn't even know he's getting that. <laughs> the switch. He just sent me a message saying, sorry, my mic is not working. Oh, okay. If, if um, Ryan, if you can hear me, you can keep sending me a message and I'll just relay whatever it is that you're saying. I think we lost Commissioner Wolf. Huh. She's log she's trying to log back on. Oh. He says, hey. I don't really have a preference. I trust Paul. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds good. There you go. Yes. All right. So All right. any other any yeah. other questions on it? Yep. Any of the commissioners have any any other questions? All right, hearing none. We take uh, see if anybody in the public wishing to for or against. All right, Thank hearing none. Martin, thanks you for your time. Thank you. Thank you very much. Hi. Thank you all. Thank you all. I, I was just wondering, this is Doug LaSalla, 37 Belmont Street. Um, what color are the Majesty windows you're looking for? White. Whitey white. circle. Yeah. yeah. White. Oh, okay. I can't see any of the submissions. Yeah. yeah. Okay. It's okay. All right. Thank you. Yep. Okay. Wait, wait a second. Hey, there she She's is. back. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, everyone. Hi, my Jennifer. My sincere apologies. It's my stellar internet service here on Wilkett Hill Road. All right, so I assume you've already had your conversations on this. We have. We did not, we did not beat up on them too badly. <laughs> I appreciate that. <laughs> All right, where do we stand? Do you, more questions still? Or are you still discussing? Nope. We're, no, we're good. We, okay. we're good. Right. It was opened up to the public, I believe, and nobody spoke up. Great. All well, right. I spoke up. Well, I'll <laughs> gas the color. Yeah. 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 Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> Nobody voiced an opinion pro or con. Con, yeah. Thank you. Okay, so if we're all set, I can move on to the next application? Yep. Yes. Sorry, yeah. folks. Thanks, Thanks for, for your time. time. Yeah. 5072. Mark Trahan, 21 Robinswood Drive. 
Good evening, commissioners. Good evening. All right, tell us what you got. Um, at our last meeting, or um, you, we discussed the uh, the window that I originally went uh, with, or was suggesting to go with, and after some insightful thoughts from those of you in the commission, we decided to go with the uh, Marvin Elevate window, which I think you, because of the proximity to the sidewalk, um, I did look at both the windows, although the Elevate is significantly more expensive, I understood the direction of the commission on that and have elected to go with the, uh, again, that elevate window. So I'm a little thrown by the fact that, um, are you doing all the windows or just the front of the house? Um, there's one window on the back of the house that we've done different additions on the back of the house uh, that wouldn't uh, be part of the purview. There is one window on the back of the house, uh, which is an, uh, a half bath that we're going to do that window as well with that same window. But all the windows that are facing the street are being redone. But how about the east and west sides of the house? Are those being done? Uh, no, there is no windows on, uh, there is a garage window. There's a garage to the left facing the house. Um, uh, there, excuse me, the window over the garage uh, area will not be done um, and the windows on the other side of the home I think will be done when we remodeled one of those rooms that don't face the street that we're doing all the windows the 8 by 12s 8 over 12s on the front of the home so the 8 on the main body of the house and the one in the breezeway or no uh, not the breezeway. There's one window in the back of the home um, that we decided just to use that window because of the quality and that's over. There's a half bath in the back of the house, which again doesn't face anywhere, but we, we are doing that window as well. Okay. And is it your intent to do the other windows that are visible from the public way, but you're, you're only doing part of the project now? Our preference generally is um, if we can to approve the entire house for, so that all the visible sides have the same product on them. Mm -hmm. Sometimes the exception to that is on a very, very old historic home. Um, we try to preserve the front facade as much as possible. Um, it, but, um, you know, your case is a little bit different. You have a newer home. Mm -hmm. Are you going to do the east and west sides eventually? And you'd like us to approve it now and you'll get to it as finances, finances allow or? Um, that's the east side of the house. There is one window um, which is completely hidden by a tree. Um, that window was replaced um, at one point if it's an issue with the commission to have that window match the others, although it doesn't really come into view, we can consider that. But our main thrust is to do all the windows on the very front of the home which are directly facing the sidewalk. That's our, our, our thoughts at the moment. Mr. Trahan, I believe where Commissioner Wolf, where her question is coming from, is on the second floor, on the east side of the house, mm -hmm. there is a window in front of the chimney. There is one window up on the second floor. Is that what you're referring yep. to? That's what I'm referring to. Yes. Yep. And that was replaced at some point? I'm, uh, I, it w was not replaced. We just weren't planning on doing that at this point. Okay. So I, and then on the, on the west side of the house, there's two windows, one, one matching the one we just talked about and one right below it. Uh, those windows will be replaced. Those will be. Yes. So we're up to eight, nine, 10, and the 11th one on the half bath and bath. On the right? back side, yes. 11 windows, okay. And, okay. Uh, all right, so what Commissioner Wolf mentioned is part of the issue is at some point, inevitably, that one window that next to the chimney, you're going to come back and say, I want to replace that too, because all the other windows work so well. And we're going to say, great. And we're, you're going to say, well, they don't make the windows that we put in in front of the house anymore. Sure. And I'd like to put something in a little bit different. Um, 
And so what we're doing is we're trying to, trying to get you to spend more money and just do them all and be done with it. Sure, I, I don't have an issue with that, Bastik. Okay. All right. We'll, we'll, we'll discuss it at the, uh, at the meeting, but I just, just so that we all understand each other, where we're coming from, and if you had major issues with it and there was strong reasoning as to why that one should stay, I'd love to hear it. No, no. Okay. All right. I love spending other people's money. <laughs> tell, us, tell us about the arbor. Sure. Um, um, hopefully you've got the images that I forwarded, the, the members have got the images that I forwarded uh, to everyone. Uh, there is an arbor that we're put, uh, we'd like to put on the right side of the home, facing the home on the right side. Um, it sits back. Uh, we have a row of arborvitaes that my neighbor and I uh, planted many years ago that are green giant arborvitaes. They're probably 15 feet high now. Um, and it's going to sit back on the side of the home by about 12 feet. Uh, and from the sidewalk to the very front of the arbor is approximately uh, 60 feet, 20 yards um, from the uh, sidewalk to the back. Uh, it's manufactured um, and being installed uh, by Cape Cod Fence and Avon, uh, the ones that, are, uh, that we're purchasing it from. And those is also the company who will be installing it as well. And can you give us the dimensions on that? Um, sure. Um, let me just go to my cut sheet here. Hold on just one moment. That should be part of what I sent you, but just to make, I will see if I can find it right now. Actually, it's not. It was part of a secondary email. Um, oh. they, he did have a, um, a sample as well that I couldn't tell if it was actually from this product because it didn't look like it could be a piece from it. Um, but the arbor is quite large and it is vinyl. That, that's correct. Bear with me, I'll give you the, the status on that. Um, that was in a secondary email that we sent. So the dimensions of the arbor I know is five feet. Um, that's outside dimension, it's five feet wide. Um, I believe it's 28 uh, inches in depth. It's 104 inches in height. Um, bear with me. I'm just going to it right now. That's good. That's good. close enough. Okay. okay. So it's five feet wide and about eight and a half feet tall. That's correct. And um, ha have you looked at other products, for instance, wood? Yeah, we have. Um, the finding the um, uh, the the short answer is we have. And candidly, they are less money. We're planning on um, planting um, um, vines that will grow over the arbor. Uh, and we have a concern with, as you know, with things growing on the arbor, uh, we have a concern about rot uh, uh, on it. And we just think because of the position of the, of the arbor from the street, it would be very difficult, I think, if we were to buy a, a wood arbor and paint it, say, a, you know, a white semi-gloss paint, I think it'd be very difficult to tell the difference between this particular item that we're stalling um, and if we paint it, again, a wood arbor. We're doing it primarily because we're concerned about rot uh, and maintenance on it. And once vines begin to grow on it, um, they, they, they get very old and they get, it takes a long time to get them going. And once we get them going, we have a concern that if we have to replace it, that we'd have to basically kill whatever was growing on the arbor at that point. Okay. That's what the winter months are for. You repaint it when it's died back, like my wisteria. Um, it, it, um, I have enough projects already, Jennifer. I don't need any more. Thank you. Does anyone else have any questions for this applicant? No. I do want to share one last thing, if I could. I'm very aware of the focus and the dedication that the commission has on um, on keeping the, the district looking the way it does. Um, if any way we thought that putting uh, the, ar the arbor that we're putting in made out of the PVC uh, would disrupt, disrupt the neighborhood, we'd be the first ones not to do it. But because it literally is sitting um, 60 uh, feet, 20 yards back from the sidewalk, um, it would, again, it would be very difficult to tell the difference between um, a semi-gloss or a gloss paint on a wood 
item versus that. I sent you images of a PVC pipe that we put up there so you can get an idea of the visual. Um, I also have um, some information or an email from my neighbor who would be the one most impacted with it, um, John Jazowski, and they have no issues with the arbor uh, as well. Of course not. He's got this huge abravity hiding it. <laughs> okay. If no, does anyone else have any questions? I'll read um, John Jazowski's note into the um, record. I do have an email attached to the application. Great. Hearing none, any comments from the public wishing to speak in favor or against? I'm going to read um, an email dated September 23, 2020. Dear Mark, nice speaking with you earlier. Per our discussion, I want to confirm and memorialize the fact that Sandra and I are fine with you erecting an arbor threshold to your property you. located next to your porch in the row of arborvitae. Best of luck to you and Daisy with the project. Sincerest regards, John Jazowski, 15 Watt Robinswood Drive. And he is in a butter. Okay, so hearing nothing further on this, if there's no one else wishing to speak in favor or against from the public, I'll entertain a motion to close the public hearing. One hearing. more, Jen. One more. Oh. Yeah, you get the amendment. Oh, I'm sorry. On Rainer Lane, yeah. Yep, yep. Sorry, I apologize. No worries. Uh, 5077, Deborah Raymond seeking an amendment on 8 Rainer Lane. Hello, uh, HDC. Um, this was uh, a, a permit and um, an approval that I had taken out, I, I think, one and a half or two years ago um, to put a, a French door into, into the back of my house. I did not put in for the lighting at that point because I was thinking about changing the outside of the house, which I did approach the HDC with. And I wanted to actually take a minute to thank Doug uh, because he was so insightful on the last meeting and he gave me a lot to think about. And because of everything he talked about, I'm keeping the status quo of the house. So um, I am now ready to put some lights on the back of the house to close out that last request that I had put in and, and approved for. The, what I, to, my, to my discovery, when I went and picked out my lights for the back of the house, and when I came home, they matched the front of my house, so I don't need to change those. So there's very little change going on there. So thank you all for your input. Consistent good taste, how's that? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Does anyone have any uh, questions? Looks good. It's like explanatory, I think. It's a very nice light. Thank you. Okay. Hearing none, any comments from the public in favor or against? Hearing none, I will um, now entertain a motion to close the public hearing and open the public meeting. Can I just, uh, this is Mia Caulfield. I just wanted to add, uh, Kim was very helpful, not only to myself, but to my contractor, so I just wanted to say that. Oh, thank you very much. Kim does an excellent job for us. She makes our lives much easier. Mia? Yes, she does. Thank you. I'll make a motion. Second. All in favor? Aye. Uh, Aye. Aye. We have voting. Uh, we have everyone who's here, so it's... Um, Doug's here think, now. I didn't do this at the beginning. Um, I don't think Doug was planning on voting. He was just okay. going to listen and weigh in unless something's changed. Doug? I'm here and I uh, was able to uh, oh. observe and participate the whole meeting, but if you already have five votes, I won't vote. Um, we have uh, the four of us and Kathleen. So it's up to you if you want to split with her or no. I'll I'll defer to Kathleen since she hasn't um, uh, since she was here uh, and should have the chance to vote before me. That's great. Thank you very much. Please do participate in our discussions. Thank you. Uh, to Thank start you. application five zero five two twenty one Chesterfield. Back to the very top. Yeah. I'd, like, I'd like to make a motion to approve with the stipulation that the lampposts be made of wood. Put the words out of my mouth. I'll second. 
So um, I think there's a chance in the spring that he might, they might want to come back and use a composite. The problem we have is that ASIC product means different things to different people right now. And um, I think we would want to see a little sample of it maybe beforehand because we we did um, have one product earlier in our season this year that was an ASIC product that actually turned out to be a vinyl ASIC product. So um, I think that for now, if you would like to build them in wood, I think they are lovely otherwise. And if um, the applicant would like to make them out of something else, he would simply have to file for an amendment, no new fee or anything like that. I think that makes sense. Uh, there just wasn't enough uh, definitive about the alternative product for us to be able to rule on tonight. So for now, I think approving the wood uh, and uh, then leaving, inviting the uh, homeowner to come back to us if um, he gets to that step um, is a good place to be. Did somebody second it? Uh, I'm, I'm sorry. I marked it. I'm sorry. Mark. Mark. I would agree with uh, the stipulations, uh, but knowing that Walpole AZAC material, it is a very substantial material, uh, both in thickness and in the gloss. It, so if he does come back and decide for that, I'm, that that's a that that's the real deal. Uh, yeah, I think uh, I agree, Chris. I think it's probably fine. I'm just worried that if good. next yep. year at this time it's a different product. Absolutely. Et cetera. Yep. So just to keep everybody on the same page. Yep. Okay. Yeah. Anyone else? All those in favor? Aye. Uh, aye. Aye. Opposed? Hearing none. Application five. The motion passes with the stipulation. Application 5058341 Main Street. May I have a motion? I'll make a motion to approve as submitted by the applicant today. I'll second, I'll second for the purposes of discussion with Vasek to clear up what that means. Yeah, no, I, I understand that they were designated. I, I thought it was clear enough to the of the 13 some odd windows, what was going to be addressed in, in the, but if we want to stipulate exactly what she said, I would defer to someone that took notes. Actually, I think uh, for Linda, it might be easier if we stip the thing exactly. Yeah. As opposed to having, making poor Linda go back and trying to figure it out. I agree. Uh, I'll withdraw my second if you'll withdraw your motion. Chris. I will. Yep. Plastic, so, if you'd like to make a motion. If this, if the motion reads, that the windows on the front facade of the house shall be replicated in kind and uh, so that's that'll be step one stipulation number two the remaining windows in the house shall be uh, there were what harvey majesties and black yes there were four simulated with simulated divided light um, or any windows let me see if I can get this spat out correctly so that'd be step two and step three should be any wooden windows can also be replaced with 12 over 12 wooden windows, period. Yeah. Does that sound right? Yes. Yeah. Any existing windows can, may be replaced with 12 over 12 wood windows. That will allow Ms. Costello to make a decision whether she wants to do the Harvey Majesties or if she wants to repair or replace in kind the window she has pretty much except that it would be going from a six over six to a 12 over 12 light division right with the exception of the facade of the house which shall be replaced in kind in kind yep okay i'll second that and have we discussed this to death <laughs> I think, I, think so. I think we have. I have nothing further to add. I think we, that we talked about it in the last two meetings 
And again, I really appreciate her um, openness to some suggestions um, to make it a good project for her and for us. You're good with this. And, just wanted to commend her efforts that, you know, she's, she's really doing a great job with that property. And it's, uh, I love that she's, she's keeping to all the details. It's just, it's, it's a wonderful, wonderful project. And I just wanted to uh, say that I thought it's a great sign of the partnership uh, that we have sometimes between the homeowner and uh, those in the community that are as aware as FASIC is. So thank you. Okay, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Hearing none, the, the motion is approved with stipulations. Application 5061-116 Center Street. I'd like to try another motion here. Uh, I'd like to approve as submitted with the following stipulations that the two second story south facing windows remain as long in second stipulation would be the windows on the attic, the half moons remain uh, in that the uh, half screens uh, in the uh, clear view. I'll second. Do we want to? And the color white is the Harvey Majesty one. Yeah. So that was submitted. Do we need to stick the windows over the door? Or did you? Uh, yeah, those would be the one. That's the second story. What Jen was identifying is okay. about is second story. Okay. Sorry. Yes. Yeah, so it's the two south facing second story windows in the center with the half moon on top. Are those two different things? Can you go through those just one more time? So yes, yeah, sorry, Kim. So the, the step would be that those remain, um, and then there are half moon windows on the attic on both the east and west side. Can I butt in here? Please. If you stip that the attic windows shall not be replaced, period, that takes care of the attic. And the window, second story windows in the center of the house shall not be replaced. That that's again, semantics I'm, to me, but that's clear. It, it is semantics, like, but it makes it, it makes it easier for sure. Our recording secretary. For recording secretary, and I just hope I'm trying to make it so that it's it's easily identifiable without necessarily looking at yeah. what the original application. The was. homeowner told us that they're not doing it either, and of I course. tend to believe them. So. Yep. Yeah, whatever you're comfortable with. That sounds good. All right, anyone else? All those in favor say aye. Oh, I'm aye. sorry. Oh, oh. I thought, comment. Sorry, yeah, I thought that we were just articulating the motion and uh, hadn't yet discussed it. Oh, sure. I, think not, I don't think there was a second. I second. Oh, Jen did. Yep. Oh, I didn't hear you, sorry. Go ahead, Doug. Uh, yeah, I think that I think that the fact that we have uh, someone else who had the chance to um, interact with us over a period of time and to review this product and others um, gives me reason to uh, favor tabling this uh, application instead. Um, I like the Harvey Majesty for some uh, installations, uh, but I think that uh, the this particular installation is very visible um, and it's on a street that is probably the best known uh, and most heavily traveled Hubbard Street of them all. Um, and so uh, we have tried it in certain places on this street uh, and there are varying levels of success. And as we've spoken in the past, um, the aluminum uh, white finish is uh, a challenge uh, in its exposure, uh, since it isn't hidden uh, when it's used as an insert. And it's um, hard to get over the idea that there's a replacement window uh, on the house as a result um, when it's next to painted white uh, wood trim. So I uh, would prefer that there be more reflection uh, before the uh, approval um, is granted here. Is 
so Doug, I think there's lots of silence. Mm -hmm. What you're asking is you're asking that this should be tabled in light of consideration of another product or not changing at all or what? Well, I would suggest that if uh, another homeowner has come to the conclusion that another product uh, is uh, a more accurate reflection of what's there and in a home of uh, the same century. Um, I think it's worth our uh, seeing if we might come to that same conclusion. I'm not asking uh, for an up or down vote on this today because I think more thought needs to go into it before uh, yet another house on that street um, goes to replacement windows. And as I said, we have a lot of houses to consider in terms of which ones are the most successful and, and which ones uh, are less. So I would venture to say that given the visibility of this home and given the relative unforgivability of this product as rendering anything other than a, a, a nice replacement window, uh, the fact is, is that I think it's still going to look like a replacement window a bit more obviously than uh, several other alternatives. And given that, I don't know that it can completely fulfill uh, or adequately fulfill the uh, mantra that we have to try to replicate the look of the existing. I can appreciate what Doug is saying um, since I made the motion, but one big factor that a homeowner looks at from their viewpoint, obviously they want to work within the district and what has been approved before is energy efficiency. And, and Doug, you, you did tout that Marvin Elevate uh, window. You know, I think that that is not a low E rated window. That that does falls short of that that rating, that weather protection. Now, the Harvey Majesty does uh, meet those requirements. A again, it's it's not an it's an, not an appropriate issue or, or or how how it looks, but it is a factor that a homeowner looks at. And I won't even go down a cost uh, standpoint. I, I think the home were, that you're alluding to was had either greater visibility from the road. I mean, you, that is right up to the road. Although this is a corner garden and center. It still sets back. Uh, you're really only going to see on the Garden Street side the sun porch and and that west exposure. Uh, you know, I still think that this is a an appropriate window uh, for that, uh, and especially for even with that location. The the problem is um, that this home is 30 years older, I believe, than the one on Robinswood. It's uh, a setting that's even less forgiving in the use of the product. Uh, I think that the product was very successfully used on a uh, two family house on Garden Street uh, opposite uh, Belmont. Uh, it has been used in some other areas successfully as well. Which uh, product? The, the, uh, the Marvin. The Marvin. I'm sorry, the, I'm sorry, yeah. the Harvey Majesty. Two uh, doors down Harvey, from this home. Two doors down window. from this home. Did you, did no, you, actually, that's, that's the main reason I'm uh, that you don't think was, worried about it here yeah. because I don't think it was fully successful at 100 Center. I do think that it was, uh, I do think the Harvey product is successful in its use on Garden Street on a two family house roughly opposite Belmont. Um, but I do think that on probably one of the grandest of Hubbard houses on one of the grandest of Hubbard streets. Uh, I think that what we see at 100 uh, indicates that it is hard to drive by that house and not be struck by the fact that there are replacement windows there. Um, and that is our main charge is, uh, you know, unlike uh, energy panels on the roof, uh, we have a different, um, um, legislative uh, obligation, and that obligation is um, more towards the replication of the look of the existing. And so I just think that 
the example that we have just two houses away uh, is indicative of uh, the worry that I have about trying to use that product uh, again on that street in a house of similar stature. Uh, that Garden Street was the Harvey, um, it was not the Harvey Majesty, the one you're talking about, the tan color the, uh, that we has, has the vinyl siding on it. It That's was the less, ex window. yeah, it's the less expensive the Harvey. Yes. Um, but it is- Slimline model, yep. But it is somewhat uh, similar in the way that it renders on the street, um, at least in, in my opinion. Uh, um, it has been, you know, I've, I've given the Harvey its due uh, as much as I can uh, in every application. And I'm not saying that uh, that's uh, something that I, I wouldn't think differently about here um, if everyone embraces it to the exclusion. Uh, but I, I think it's the, the main issue that uh, the homeowner uh, referenced in choosing the Marvin uh, on Robinswood is my one of the main issues with this window because it is clearly a insert window um, the way that it's constructed. It's less so than if it were beveled, but it's still a visible perimeter. No, no doubt. And we all had a chance to go out and take a look at them though. But I, I think those windows are longer and narrower that lent itself to that. Marvin Elevate window, um, but th this being the 30 plus year old, and, and I tend to think that 100 Center Street, uh, you know, Wisner's home is, an, in my estimation, came out, uh, you know, an appropriate proper installation. And, and to me, it because of the white uh, that around the house, the trim work, and this is an all white house that we're talking about as well, too, that it, it's going to be a lot more forgiving than, than than what you're thinking, uh, in, my, in my opinion. I appreciate it. Vasek or Mark, do you have any thoughts? I mean, my take on it is whether it's RV, whether it's Marvin, whether it's XYZ, a replacement window is a replacement window and it's never gonna read the same as what's coming out of there. Whatever you put in there as a replacement window is a loss to the original fabric of the house. So, yeah. I agree. Um, you know, I'm not really inclined to, maybe we should vote on the motion and see how it goes. And then if it doesn't pass, then we can decide if we want to table or make another motion. Does that, does everyone agree with that? Sure. All right, sure. I'm going to call, call the motion. All those in favor say aye. 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 Um, Kathleen, did you vote? No, nay. Nay, okay. Nay on Botsik. So it's uh, three, three, to two. Two, three to two and the motion carries. Motion, uh, application 506254 Middletown Avenue. I'll make a motion to approve um, as submitted with the following stipulation that the mechanicals be put in the basement. Um, Mark, would you include that the conduit be on the interior as well? Yes. The Thank you. I'll, se I'll second that. Uh, discussion? So I do, I do have some concern. As you know, I'm in general not in favor of the solar panels in the district. I think it's very difficult to find a spot where they can be applied with um, minimal impact. Uh, in this case, um, they are entirely on the back of the house and mechanicals entirely in the house. What you're gonna be left with is a glancing view from Summerfield. Excuse me, I'm trying not to sneeze. Um, Let it I, loose. I don't, what's that? Let it loose. <laughs> I don't think that um, on this particular house of this era, um, with that glancing view uh, from a street that is also a street of, of newer house, new construction houses, I think um, that it doesn't meet our higher standard for these panels of substantially impairing the 
district uh, in character and appearance. And so I think that, um, you know, as always, it's a difficult one for me, but um, I think it'll be okay in this spot. Mechanicals and conduits on the interior. Was there another um, stipulation or was that, did that No, come? that was it. And there was a second mark to your Jennifer. Motion? It Jennifer. was me. Thank you. I don't, I'm catching bits and pieces. I'm sorry. Sorry, we are having a little, it's a little jerky tonight for some reason. Um, anyone else? Comments, anyone else? Hearing none. Um, Call the motion. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Hearing none, the application is approved with stipulations. App application 50639 Avalon Place. Have the rinse and repeat, right? Yeah, I'll, I'll make the same, uh, I'll make the same uh, motion uh, with the same stipulations that uh, Mechanicals are put inside, and that the um, oh, Jen, I'm sorry, remind me of the other part. Conduit. Conduit will be put on the interior. In the interior as well. Do we have a second? Second. Now this one I actually feel is different um, because of the era of the house and the fact that it can be fully seen from the back view. Um, in between older homes, it's not a newer neighborhood. Um, you know, I feel that it, it's a difficult one because uh, I voted against an application a couple doors down across the street where there are panels on the front side of the garage that are um, set well back, but visible. Um, so for me, for consistency for me, I'm not in favor of this one, but um, of course I'm interested in hearing what everyone else has to say. I think for me, the reason I, I jumped in on approving this and making the motion is, you know, the back side of the house, although visible from the other street, it's still the back side of the house. So when I think about the streetscape from the front side of the house, that's really where I look at it and, you know, where uh, the appearance of the house as a whole, you know, seeing something from a backyard, it's a little farther set back, it just doesn't, uh, just doesn't bother me as much, I guess. I would agree with Mark. Um, I guess I'm informed by the relatively uh, dated now uh, installation on Chesterfield that faces Oldham. Um, it is um, over to the side and, and not necessarily all that obvious, but it's the back of a house that's visible from another public way. And we just tend to be more forgiving of installations on the back, backs of houses. This, it was going to use the flat black uh, components that we favor uh, where we do have them. And I think that at least from my, my take, Jen, would be that the consistency that we've tended to favor, although every uh, application is different, has been to favor installations on the back of a house. And if you happen to have a house that has that favorable uh, angle so that the south side is not the side that's as visible. You benefit from the fact that um, it's not the front and, and not as visible um, until we get to a stage where they replicate the look of an existing roof. There's always going to be some hurdle uh, and this is one I feel like I can uh, live with. I appreciate everyone's comments. Does anyone else want to weigh in? Yeah, uh, I, you know, looking at solar panels, I think especially now that they have developed them to the point where they are black, they are low profile, it's a utility. And I think if we were looking at these things 120 years ago, we would have been, we would have had our knickers in an equal twist about power lines going down uh, stringing in front of the houses and at this point we don't see it. We don't see power lines, we don't see utility poles. For that matter, for the most part, we don't see the meters hung off the sides of the houses. Um, I think at some point we're going to be at that same point with the solar panels. 
uh, Avalon Place, Middletown Avenue are both on the back sides, very much secondary uh, views of the buildings. Uh, I think the impact on the district is minimal. Thank you, everyone. Um, I'll call the vote. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Nay. Okay. The motion, the motion carries and the application is approved with the stipulation. Application 5064, Six River Road. Make a motion to approve as submitted. A second. That's very appropriate, like you said, Jen, in the hearing, it's very, it's not really visible from where it's put. We had the plot plan, the designs, uh, very appropriate for that area. I agree. Anyone else? No. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed? Hearing none, the motion carries and the application is approved as submitted. Application 506524 Maple Street for the extension of time. Uh, may I have a motion? I'll make a motion to approve as submitted. Second. Um, this is most mostly administrative. Um, I think it's perfectly reasonable for the reasons stated in the meeting. Um, I don't really have anything further. It's a fully vetted application. <laughs> oh. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. The motion carries uh, for the extension of time. Application 506657 Middletown, the front porch. Um, I'll make a motion to table. Second. Uh, the applicant has not yet made himself available and I do think that this is an application where the project has been done in advance of the uh, approval being sought. So we will um, continue to hope that he comes and talks to us about it at the next meeting. Application, oh, all those in just favor of tabling? Aye. Just a quick question. Oh, sure. Sorry. Does the um, lack of uh, application apply to the windows on the whole house or are we just talking about the porch? You know, the, um, I think the porch for sure, I'm not sure about that, Doug. Um, that was something I was going to inquire with Kim. Sure. When I did drive by, it does look like all the windows were changed, but I'm not sure of the time. I know the that. answer to that, definitely the porch. Okay. So, um, move to table. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries. The application is tabled. Application 5067. 360 Main Street. Um, make, may I have a motion? So the, applica the application was for changing of the material of the solar panels themselves. And to add the south facing seven panels that were previously rejected. Um, I'll make a motion to approve the new material and deny the request for the additional seven panels as previously denied. I'll second that. I, I just want to say that I appreciate that uh, the commissioners could have asserted that there be no consideration of the um, seven that were rejected. Um, I, uh, so I, that said, uh, I, I will say that um, I share the concern that uh, the commissioners had about the visibility of those, uh, of, of that area. Um, the other day I drove down Center Street and there's a house on Center Street with solar panels uh, that face the street or are visible from the street. It's kind of an L-shaped uh, house that's two-story, that originally two-family, then returned to one family, I believe, on the north side of the street. And as time goes on, uh, some of those more rearward uh, installations um, become a bit less vivid. Uh, I don't know if it's because of uh, the, what Vatsik is describing uh, as utility um, familiarity over time, uh, over but, <laughs> but I, I, I would say that I'm definitely intrigued by the 
uh, flat black panels. And uh, I think that if they, uh, I, I think I would probably be able to live with them in the areas where they had previously been rejected. But I'm not voting tonight and I'm uh, willing to support the decision of the majority. You know, in this case for me, um, you know, we discussed it at length at the last hearing of the placement. You know, the house is built in the late 1880s. It's on Main Street. It's um, a beautiful, um, prominent home, Victorian home, uh, Queen Anne style home. Um, I do think that placement in such a visible area, I know the homeowner thinks that those seven panels in that particular spot are not very visible, but they really are. Um, it, not just when you're walking on the sidewalk, which hundreds of people do every week, but when you're driving by in the car as well, and it really does open up a slippery slope. Um, and, and in that sense, I really do think it impairs the historic character of that stretch of homes and the appearance of the district and that home in particular. Um, you know, I, I'm mindful of the trend towards, um, you know, more sustainable heating and cooling for our houses. But at the same time, you know, we have a special burden in the district that needs to be um, taken into account as well. I think he's got a lot of panels on the back of the house. And although he might not be able to maximize, um, we do have to weigh that against um, impairing the historic character and nature of the district and, and the street in particular. So um, I, can't, I can't vote in favor for it. That said, you know, like you, Doug, I think the products are getting better and better. Uh, Vasek, to your point, I think as time goes on, you know, it's all evolved 20 years ago when we were doing this. Um, the windows that we consider now have improved over time, and I fully expect that the um, panel will continue to improve and eventually we'll come to the point where we'll have a product that we can put on these houses. I just don't think that we've reached it yet. Um, anyone else have anything to add? We've talked about it pretty lengthily at the uh, last meeting in this. Uh, yeah, so my two bits are, I would come down on the side of the homeowner where I would agree with the homeowner that the impact would be minimal. Uh, it's, again, it's the back side of the house. Yes, it does face, it's, you get a glancing view from the street. If you did get that, that glancing view from the street, we wouldn't be discussing it at all anyway. In, in this case, Vasek, it's actually the south facing side. So it's actually on the side of the house where yes. it's discussing, yeah. It's the side, but it's, it's definitely behind the gable, the main gable of the house. So it's, there ain't much there. But by that same token, I think there is another roof panel facing the east side that, that those same panels probably could be relocated to. Uh, without- I think in our last discussion, there was something. There was some bearing issue. Yeah, bearing issue. Okay. Couldn't handle it. There's a flat roof involved. Yeah, bearing, load okay. bearing. Fine. No, no, that said, you know, they came back with these solid black ones, which may be more expensive. If they decided they wanted to go back to the other product on those roofs that on the roof that we cannot see at all, I certainly would be open to an amendment. If I had to take a guess, the solid black product is the one that's being sold now, period. Okay. Um, also, anyone else? Hearing none, all those in favor of the motion. Aye. 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 The motion carries with the approval of the new color and denial of the seven new panels. Application 5068-120 Main Street. Make a motion to approve the, the application as submitted. I will second. The application came through very well detailed, good elevations indicating what is being done, uh, details of what is being done as far as windows showed up, A, in the attachments and also on the drawings, as well as the siding. I agree. 
the homeowner called out, um, Kim, um, I know it's already been said on the record, but I think that's uh, a reflection that when applicants work closely with the coordinator, it makes for a smoother uh, application, even when the project is substantial, more than a fence post. So thank you, Kim. Thanks, Doug. Okay, all those in favor? Aye. 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 The application is approved as submitted. Application 5069385 Hartford Avenue. Make it motion to approve as submitted. I'll second. We, we, uh, again, um, we detail appropriate uh, matching existing. Um, yeah. It's, it's a lean-to shed on the back of a garage with very little visibility to the district, uh, very little street impacts. Yeah, I think it's completely appropriate. I agree. Anyone else? All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Hearing none, the motion carries. Application 5070-157 Broad Street. I'll move to approve as submitted. I'll second. Um, this was an easy addition on a very nice fence. I think it's going to be a great project. And obviously, um, this will make the yard more usable for the homeowner. It's almost always the case that having a gate on both sides is handy. <laughs> so I'm glad that she uh, discovered that before she was done with the project. and. Uh, things are coming along quite beautifully there. I agree. If there's nothing further, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Hearing none, the motion carries. The application is approved as submitted. Application 5071 71 Center Street. I'll make a motion to approve as submitted. Uh, I was out of the meeting for this one, so I'm going to recuse myself. <laughs> okay. Um, I'll make I'll book, make the uh, second for discussion. So I think basically we're being faced with the same thing as we were back on. Uh, yes. Uh, same windows, same style house. Uh, you know. I, I believe it's going to look like a replacement window. Uh, there is fabric of the building that's being lost if you do do that replacement. Um, I believe PA Windows does a fine job uh, with their installations. Uh, nothing to take away from them. It's just we're dealing with the limitations of the product and it's always about the product that's out there that's going into a formidable house. So uh, I would, I'm, I'm not in favor of this for that reason. Thank you, Vasek. Uh, there are just so many products that are out there now that uh, to constantly revert to this product on every installation uh, because we're so familiar with it. And because of its favorable attributes doesn't mean it will be successful in all of uh, the areas where uh, it might be used. And I go back to, again, uh, Center Street uh, is the most significant Hubbard Street of them all. Um, it is uh, probably the most significant uh, street that is from uh, the colonial revival era. And uh, I just think that the, uh, the difference between Center Street and uh, other streets uh, in other towns is that it's in a historic district. Um, if you drive through West Hartford, there are lots of streets that have been completely uh, dominated by window replacement. And when you drive down those streets, there's definitely a different feel on them 
because the windows don't match the period of the homes in terms of the look that they evoke. I think that's eventually what's happening to Center Street. And the thing that people love the most about Center Street is that feeling that it's something other than a 20, uh, 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 I should say a 20th century street with 21st century windows. Uh, it's rapidly uh, becoming the latter. Uh, and I think that it's what is the difference between a street that's in a district and a street that's not. It's a good thing I have thick skin, Doug, because I live on Woodland Street, and I thought that was a quintessential uh, Hubbard uh, home street, but very close to center. And it's funny that you mentioned that driving down center, you know, where there's uh, solar panels that face that. We approved two brand new homes at the end to Main Street. So, so it has evolved. You know, our charge is an evolving community, river community town. And I, I bet you, you know, the we're probably, as you said, it has changed over probably over 50% of the homes on Center Street have, have had some type of replacement window, whether a Harvey or a Marvin Elevator, some type. Uh, through the years, and, and again, and homeowners are gravitating towards it. To to it is a, it, it, as Vasek said, the replacement window. You, you can't disguise it, but people are looking for those energy efficiencies as well uh, to remain in the district, make them affordable, what have you. And, and again, this is now, I don't know how many Harvey Majesties uh, in white we've approved on Center Street, but, but that ha that road has evolved uh, from. It does have the solar panels. It does have two brand new homes at the end, anchoring the one end. Um, and I would vote for Woodland Street, but that's okay. I do love Woodland Street, and I, I should have that. said that it's... Uh, <laughs> no, it the is. Road There's no doubt Center Street. Street with the canopy. We've lost the canopy of trees there through the years, uh, for sure, that it's changed. But um, it's, really, uh, it's really only because that the spur of Woodland has a different name. Absolutely. We don't think of it as, no, as better, but... I would strongly disagree with the notion. I think that you're mixing metaphors when you say that that the houses evolve. I mean, the street is evolving because we have two new construction homes on it. Um, energy uh, sources are evolving and we try solar panels in some places. But there's, uh, to say that the house evolves, uh, I think that the reasons you're citing, uh, which is energy savings in the window and uh, homeowner preference. Uh, I mean, part of the no, reason no, we no, had no, no, don't, don't construe any more than what the statements are. I'm not, don't read no. any more into them what they are, but no, because you know, they're factual. We have cut sheets, we, we get those. And you know, what, what I'm trying to say, uh, I'm not mixing metaphors. I, I don't believe that I am. You may be construing that, but I'm not going well, down that road. But, but I, it is just something, uh, yeah, to, to look I at and, and to rule on what uh, homeowners bring to us. Um, I, I, I understand that and I appreciate There's it. There's always a better end. product, always a better product, no doubt. And we have lots of proof of that with this product in those homes. So thank you. I appreciate right. it. Thank you, guys. That was a robust conversation there. <laughs> hey, shall we do a vote? Yes. Okay. So All those in favor, keep uh, Yeah, can I add one more last thing, Jennifer? I'm sorry. I, I think the little difference when this one and then the house down at 116 Center Street is I don't believe the sunroom windows are being replaced. There's some of the specialty windows here and on even the driveway side uh, in the kitchen that we're not replacing. Um, so, so a little bit different uh, on this to, um, to the 116 um, Center, just to add that. Okay. I'll concede I'm that. Sorry. That's a good point. Thank you. Um, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. I abstain. Opposed? Opposed. Opposed. And the motion is deadlocked at 2-2. Two -two. In that case, I would make a motion to table this to the uh, county meeting. And hopefully at that point, we'll be able to uh, vote on this with a full quorum of five commissioners where it won't be deadlocked. Okay. Uh, do I have a second on the tabling? I'll second it. All, all those in favor say aye. 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 I abstain. 
application. Um, sorry, I lost my spot here. Application 5072-21 Robinswood. I make a motion to approve the application with the stipulation that the windows on the side of the house visible from the street also be approved for the product that was applied for. And I'm also including in that as uh, is the five by nine or five by eight and a half vinyl uh, arbor to be placed where the applicant indicated. That's the motion. Is there, is there, is there a second? No second. Can I ask you a question? <laughs> yes. <laughs> Maybe because I, that just did not, I didn't catch that at all. So you're asking for a, the second stipulation to put the arbor that he asked for in the place that he asked for. No, no, no. That's not a stipulation. I was just <laughs> making clear that everybody knew that it's, it's part of the, it was the, I was seeking to approve as submitted. The, the arbor. The arbor. Okay. So just that the windows on the side visible to the street are included in the application. Yes. Approved. Okay. Correct. And nobody wants to second that, so we'll go on to somebody else. Uh, <laughs> I'd like to approve with the stipulation, uh, improve, approve in part and deny in part, approve the windows on the front and sides of the house as submitted and deny the arbor in the material as submitted. I'll second. So, you know, I think um, we've gone around and around on the windows on this house, so I don't really have much to add to that. Um, but I do think that the um, arbor in the vinyl is not far away from the street at all. I hopped out of my car and took a picture myself, and it is massive. Um, I don't think most arbors have a five foot spans to walk through, um, you know, a residential arbor like that. So an eight and a half feet tall, I do think it's going to be very visible. And I think that the, the product material is a problem for me anyway. Um, you know, I'd like to see it in wood or if it could be made from some composite. I don't, I don't know what the limits are on what the composite materials can do. I assume you can do just about anything with them. Um, but I think that this, this vinyl arbor and the material uh, that I did see the sample, um, I just, I think it's gonna look like a giant plastic arbor. Can't disagree with you. Um, does anyone else have any other thoughts? Yeah, so before we get to the arbor, did I totally blow this thing and because I understood Mark saying that he was applying just for the front windows. He was, and then was you, one around the back someplace. And but you added the ones on the sides. Yeah. So that's what I did. I did the same thing as you, the front and the sides. Okay. Um, okay. Approved as submitted, and the um, a denial on the arbor. Okay, but he never submitted for the side windows. That's why that part was a stipulation. Okay, it's a stipulation. Okay. When you say as submitted, that confuses me. Sorry. I'm easily confused. As am I on application number 14 of the night. Yeah. Um, any other discussion about the arbor or the windows? Yeah, I mean, the arbor, I think, you know, 60 feet is set back a fair bit. And once, you know, this, this reminds me of a quote of about architects and doctors in that architects, uh, about doctors can bury their mistakes and the best that architects can do is grow vines. And I think that's what, Ma what Mark Drahan is proposing <laughs> to do. 
Unfortunately, we can't, we're not promised the success of that. And, you know, it, and part of it too, I have to say, and I probably should have added this, on that streetscape, this giant plastic arbor is just not going to meld. The house to the right of it is a full wood house, um, wood windows, wood screen, storms and screens, the beautiful um, it, bread, bed and breakfast across the street, you know, all with top of the line products. Um, it, we're certainly not holding everyone to the top of the line product standard, um, but I do think that there are other options out there for an arbor. I think an arbor will look lovely there. I just, I just think that this particular one is probably not a good fit. As a point of order, can I ask, uh, Jen, you know, well, and we've been doing this, for, you know, it seems frequently the last couple of times, and it is to help the homeowner should they have the finances to complete the other facades of the home. When we stipulate someone in that, we ask them to replace windows that they had no intention for a variety of windows to do. Uh, are we, can it be worded more so that we approve windows in the home at, within that time frame to be approved? It sounds like almost well, a couple of things we're dictating to people that, hey, yeah, you have to replace a window that you ha had replaced five years earlier or what have you. Um, I know it's in Bassick's point that this may not be in production any longer, but if this Marvin elevator is as good as, as some of the members think it is, then it should be around. You know, they did well, change their name. My impression, and I mean, correct me if I'm wrong, was that um, Mr. Tran was open to adding those couple side windows. Um, I think he, he was coerced, may, as the word I'd used, but yeah. <laughs> he wasn't planning on doing the whole And he may have the wherewithal, yeah. yeah. Um, but again, you know, like every other project, it doesn't have to all be done at once. You know, we've Often, but I just want to clarify that that the, you know because a lot approved of, the entire house when yeah. they have no intention of doing that entire house this year or in the immediate future. So I appreciate that, and I think that though sometimes you know we talked about when applicants come to us, you know, they're it's like they're facing their maker at times that they don't know that, and and that we want to be clear that we we are it is in it, it's trying to help them that they don't have to come back and and maybe consider that right. on a volume discount if you will, but. Yeah, I, I just wanted to clarify that. Oh, and I definitely Dr. think that that was Vasek's point was more as an assist than a negative. No, I, I, he, he's, that's a big heart and I know that that's where he's coming from, but I, I would also, but sometimes the homeowner does not and it seems like sometimes we jump out of our purview on that as well. But now, as far as the arbor is concerned, um, you know, they, they tell you not to put wisteria on an arbor and be out of the ground in a, in a couple of years. Uh, you know, because those get so aggressive, but there's generally, there is definitely other materials out there. Uh, if this homeowner has already looked at the difference in, in the windows, uh, maybe he could explore others or come back with, with some PVC. So, some is okay. You know, some of it is sleeves over. We don't know if it's a sleeve over two by fours or, uh, or you know, over uh, some type of pressure treated wood uh, to give it more bulk. Uh, we don't know that, we know the height and dimensions, but we don't know the thickness of the posts, are they five inch posts, four inch posts? I don't think that was provided uh, either. Um, so I'd be more in favor of tabling. Um, so, so what happens to the applicant? He comes back, we deny the arbor, he comes back with a new material for the I'd arbor. Be ha I'd be happy to modify um, if, who seconded, Mark? I did. Okay, I withdraw my motion if you withdraw your second and okay. I'll, move, I'll move to approve the windows with the stipulation that in addition to the front windows, the sides of the house are also to be replaced and table the arbor for further consideration of other materials. I'll second. Before you vote, I just have a comment. I, um, I think that the idea that a homeowner could come in and limit the discussion to only the windows they want to change when the impact of the window change on even just those windows creates a discussion about the whole building means that we're not operating outside our purview when we talk about windows that they're not talking about. 
they always have the choice not to proceed with the project based on the approval that we give them. Nobody's saying that they have to do what uh, we have asked them to do. But when the door is propped open, the uh, conversation opens uh, to what's going to be most successful on the building at large. And as you indicated, this is almost always being offered for the convenience of the homeowner. There are times when they might not have wanted to have to do other windows, but part of the reason we would not get into those other windows if we didn't think that the change that they're making is substantial enough that they wouldn't coexist with the windows that they have. So I don't see it as being outside our purview. Um, so oh, absolutely, Doug, and 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 I and pretty well, we all know that there's no doubt. But our feedback I get from homeowners it is that they feel that they're obligated to do it. So that conveying that message, we all know our our. So when that was again out of context, a little bit out of our purview, I think just sometimes we need to I explain see. it uh, in that instance. But that, that is, you're right on point there. But thank some, you, I I agree thank with you. you. All right, folks, my coordinator is telling me I can't split a vote with the half approval and half table. So I'm going to have to modify my um, motion again. Um, if Mark, you would withdraw your second, I will make yet another motion. Right. Just one more time though. Jen? Um, <laughs> Jen? Yes. Sure. If the motion is to approve with stipulations on the windows, and deny without prejudice on the arbor, then he can come back in. Without prejudice, can come back and without any. That's prejudice. true. I just don't think you're. I don't think you can table half. Okay. Or can we uh, de okay. also designate to follow up on Vasek? Can you say you want it in wood? Or and he comes back for an amendment on that. Yeah, the way you prove you prove the deal yeah so i'll make my motion I'll, I'll move to approve the windows with the stipulation that the side windows also be replaced and the second stipulation that the arbor be constructed of wood now may i have a second i'll second thank you <laughs> all those in favor aye, aye. aye. opposed uh, the motion carries. Uh, our final application, 5077 5077-8 Rainer Lane. May I have a motion? Make I'll, a motion to prove as submitted. I'll second. The easiest one of the night. <laughs> the lovely light. Uh, it is perfectly appropriate on a nice project. I uh, have just two things that I wanted to say. First, for the last application, I'm grateful for the effort of the homeowner to engage with us on the Robinswood project and either Doug Lasella or uh, perhaps me uh, is who uh, Deb may have been referring to on this Rainer project either way. Uh, I'm glad that she uh, found whatever advice was given by a Doug to be helpful. Thank you. Thanks. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion carries. Uh, moving on to the approval of minutes for September 22nd. May I have a motion? I'll make a motion. I'll second. <laughs> our usual comments for the great assistance um, of our reporter and our district coordinator, who, although she supplies us with a lot of information, all the applications are in really good shape when they get to us, and I appreciate that. All those in favor? Aye. 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 I think I'm voting too. Yes, you are here. Um, Kim, do we have any other public comments or general matters for the historic district? Nothing else. Do you have anything to report to us? I do not. No correspondence? None. I will move to adjourn. Take care, care, everybody. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank, Thank you, Doug. Thank I'm you. sorry it was such a long night. You did well with a long agenda.
Thank, Thank you, applicants. Thank you for listening to me. <laughs> Good night.